Hi, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about the importance of the words you use when you're dealing with clients. Okay, so I've noticed a, a kind of a disturbing trend in the emails that I get from software companies, right? Uh, I told you before how I get, you know, one to two emails a day from different software companies around the world. They'll say like, you know, they'll either say, you know, Dear Eric or, you know, more often than not, they'll just say, Dear Company Owner or something. And then they'll say, you know, we are a software development company from, you know, India, Bulgaria, you know, wherever. And then they'll say, you know, we, we want to work with you on projects and then not list like, a ton of different software, you know, platforms that they use. And then uh, towards the bottom, they'll have the term mobility solutions. And it just, that term just doesn't sit well with me, right? I always say mobile application development or mobile software development. But, you know, lately I noticed this in, um, you know, people contacting me on Skype saying, hey, Eric, I'd like to work with you with mobility applications or with mobility solutions. And there's just something about the word mobility mobility solutions that makes me think of mobility scooters which is something that like really obese people use like at Walmart or whatever or you know or like you know disabled people like mobility I think of mobility as being something that is for people who who need mobility like mobility scooters or mobility you know things and I don't think of mobile applications using that term and it's just one of these things that doesn't sit well with me I mean, maybe everybody's adopting that term and I'm just, I'm just fighting back against it, right? But I think, that, I think that language makes a big difference in communication with clients, right? I talked about the other day how I, um, I don't like the term freelancer. I don't like to refer to myself as a freelancer and I don't like to talk about freelance work because I think it just has different connotations with it and I just don't like the way it, it, it describes you know, the branding side of things. And that sounds really, really petty. I know that sounds really petty. But I want, I used to have this job. I, I'll tell you guys, you know, I know I tell you guys about a lot of the jobs that I've had. I've had lots of different jobs before getting into software, like after the army. After the army, I was, um, I, do, I worked three different jobs when I was in Hawaii. And then we moved to San Antonio, Texas, and I was working at SeaWorld of Texas, right? So I grew up in San Diego where they had the largest SeaWorld park, but I, I got a job at SeaWorld of Texas in San Antonio, right? So my job, I was a narrator. So I was a narrator for dolphins. So you go from like, you go from, you know, pool to like habitat to habitat and you have to like memorize all these details about the animals so you can answer questions. And like at the dolphin petting pool, you have to, you know, on the microphone, you sort of walk around the pool. You're, you're giving this narration at the same time you're kind of just making sure they don't mess with the animals and stuff like that. Um, so, so you walk around saying, hi, you know, welcome to the marine mammal pool. My name is Eric, you know, and I represent, on behalf, sorry, hi, on behalf of the SeaWorld of Texas Education Department, I would like to welcome you to the marine mammal pool. My name is Eric. On the other side of the pool is Joe, and we'd like to talk to you about these bottlenose dolphins. And then you have to give this spiel about all this kind of stuff. But, I mean, it was such an interesting job. I mean, it paid nothing. It was like, it was definitely minimum wage, right? And a lot of kids were doing it. I was going to university, so it was this thing. But one of the things that they really drilled into you when you get a job at SeaWorld is the language that you can use and the language that you can't use. And it all has to do with perceptions and the connotations that they bring, right? So there's certain things you can't say if you work at SeaWorld. At least this, this is back in 1995, 90, 94, 95. You, you can't say the word tank. You can't say the whale is in the tank or the fish is in the tank, right? You have to say the pool, right? You can't say tank, you say pool. You don't say, you can't use the term in captivity. You have to say in a zoological environment. You can't say the cage. You have to say, you know, the habitat. You can't say, um, you know, uh, you, there's loads of things that you can't say. You can't say, um, uh, you know, you can't say the, the, the fish or the dolphins, you always have to, the animals. So if you're going to talk about the animals in the zoological habitat, or even, even just now, it's such a, it's such a habit now that I would say we would go from habitat to habitat, not from, you know, exhibit to exhibit or whatever. And there was, there were really, you really had to use a certain language and you have to, like you couldn't say the word tank because you think of a fish tank you had to use the word pool because pool has different connotations to it like you know the the whale is in the pool then it, it sounds you know we we associate the word pool with fun and enjoyment and we think the word tank is being like a cage like a cage for water the same way you can't say it in the cage you have to say in the habitat the habitat sounds 
you know, soft and, and all this stuff. You can't say the word in captivity. You have to say that, you know, in a zoological environment. Now, I'm not, you know, I, I, there was a really good, just uh, as an aside, there was a really good documentary called Blackfish about SeaWorld and, and all that. And the public opinion has definitely changed in terms of SeaWorld. And my opinion has changed too. All right, I'm telling you this, not so you judge me as being like a big SeaWorld supporter. I'm just saying that language was important for them. I remember, you know, why, when you watch politics in the U.S., they, you know, uh, they're very careful about the words they choose. They can't, you know, they'll adopt a term and they'll use it all the time. And I think getting back to, you know, apps, you know, this is something that if you deal with clients, you have to think a lot about the language that you use. And it sounds very trivial, right? Like when I say I don't like to use the term freelancer, I don't like to use the word, you know, the term mobility solutions because it, it, it brings up different connotations, right? Uh, there's certain things that we won't talk that I won't say when I'm when I'm dealing with clients. I mean, I might I might say them when I'm talking to you, but I won't talk them. You know, if I'm with a client in a conversation, like I never use the word bug. I don't say you know we we still have a few bugs. I always use the term I always use the word issues. Right? I use the word issues instead of bugs, and that might sound petty. That might sound shallow, but you know. So, yeah, so like I said, you know, we, we have an issues list. We don't have a bug list. We have an issues list, right? If I talk about, you know, uh, we, you know, this is a beta release. There may be a few issues with the application still. I don't say the bugs because bugs sound unintentional. Issues sound like a problem that just needs to be overcome, right? So it could be something like, oh, yeah, every time I open the app on iPhone, it crashes. The app crashes and the memory fills up and I have to reboot my phone. You know, that's a very big issue, right? So, but the, you know, I, I use a... Um, I won't use the word, uh, I won't use the word freelancer, I'll use the word, you know, we're developers. Like, I won't use the word, you know, I won't say that we're worried about something, I'll say we're concerned with something. I'll say, uh, you know, there's lots of different things and it, it really is, it's the language that you use when dealing with clients and trying to get them on board. I mean, it's very, very subtle, but it's also very important, right? Uh, I would like to know what some of the language language you guys use, or if you even think about it at all. If you if you do work with clients, uh, this is something that you know. When somebody says mobility solutions, it it just it rankles me. It, it bothers me if somebody says you know uh, uh, you know if somebody says we're cheap. You know that bothers me. I like to hear the word inexpensive or value. You know value instead of cheap. You know somebody's valuable rather than you know or value based rather than cheap and stuff like that. I'd be really interesting to hear, interested to hear what you guys think about that. But uh, anyway, that's just just wanted to put that out there. Please, please, please stop saying mobility solutions. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.